Good morning, students. Today we're going to be talking about the water cycle. Yes, that includes the processes of evaporation, transpiration, condensation, precipitation, runoff, and accumulation. Are you ready to get started to learn about how the earth recycles its water? Let's go. The water cycle. The cycle of processes where water circulates between the atmosphere, land, and Earth's oceans. We're going to start with evaporation. When the sun heats up the water, the water turns into vapor and rises toward the sky. When water evaporates, it is lighter than air. That's cool. Here is a diagram of what evaporation looks like. So the sun heats up the water and the water molecules rise. Transpiration. You might not have heard of this one, but it is definitely a part of the water cycle. Plants absorb water from the soil. The plant will use the water to help it grow. Extra water travels through the plant to its leaves. It is then pulled out and evaporates into the air. Condensation. When water vapor in the air becomes cooler by touching a cold surface, it becomes liquid again. It is the opposite of evaporation. Precipitation. Precipitation occurs when condensed water has become too heavy for the atmosphere to hold. Precipitation. The clouds full of water molecules become heavy and colder. As the evaporation cools, it turns back into water and falls to the ground. There are several different types of precipitation. Rain, snow, hail, and sleet. Accumulation. Water falls back to the earth and it has to accumulate somewhere. Some of the places that you can find liquid water on earth would include ponds, lakes. If you live in Texas, you've probably heard of Lake Travis or Caddo Lake or Lake Louisville or White Rock Lake or rivers. Here in Bastrop, Texas, the Colorado River runs right through the downtown of the city. You also have the Guadalupe River where you can go tubing, the Rio Grande, the Nueces in Corpus Christi, and the Natchez River in Beaumont. You also have streams where water can accumulate. And of course, eventually all the water leads back to our oceans, the Atlantic, Pacific, Indian, Arctic, and Southern Ocean. So here's a diagram of the water cycle. First off, the sun starts the process. It heats up the water and the water molecules begin to rise. That's called evaporation. Trees, through their leaves, give off water that they didn't use in the photosynthesis process and we call that transpiration. Then the water starts to condense and form clouds, condensation. And then the water falls back to the earth in the form of precipitation. It accumulates in our ponds, rivers, lakes, and oceans. And of course we see runoff as it makes its way back to our oceans. When the process of evaporation, transpiration, condensation, and precipitation occur, water has completed a cycle, the water cycle. The water cycle is the Earth's opportunity to recycle its water. Here are some interesting facts about water here on Earth. The human body. The average human body is made up of 50 to 65% water. Did you know a gallon of water weighs 8.34 pounds? Water covers 70.9% of the Earth's surface. That's a lot. Did you know that approximately 400 billion gallons of water are used in the United States per day? Now let's see if you can join me in the water cycle song. Are you ready? Here we go. Water travels in a cycle, yes it does. Water travels in a cycle, yes it does. It goes up as evaporation, forms clouds as condensation, then falls down as precipitation. Water travels in a cycle. 
Saturn travels in a cycle. Yes, it does. Oh my goodness, that was so much fun learning about the water cycle. Until next time. Water travels in a cycle.